everyone. Today I'm going to do a review. I'm going to talk about a shoe that I got a while back. I um, actually got these back in 2013 in the winter time. I was just starting to get into good footwear. Yeah, I had my first couple pairs of Aldens and I started to really look into the English shoe market because I was getting into J. Crew at the time and they were selling a brand called Alfred Sargent Monk Straps and I was also reading a lot of I was reading a lot of GQ at the time as well so you know taking it in and, and sort of doing my research and, and seeing what was all out there I had purchased a pair of Alfred Sargent Monk Straps I loved them I thought that they were some of the best shoes i ever experienced in my life one day I was I was supposed to be doing my doing homework. Ended up browsing the internet. I came across a website called afineparachoes.com in the UK. They sell Alfred Sargents. And at the time, my shoe and boot knowledge was, was strictly Alden in America and Alfred Sargent in the UK. And I thought that those were the, the big two. Um, but it turns out that there's more. <laughs> And there's actually quite a bit of heritage of, of shoe and boot making in the UK. Uh, quite an impressive one, actually. And so on a fine pair of shoes.com, I ended up ordering these Sanders Bruno model. It's a short wing blucher, and it's in navy, where I have an, an affinity for the color navy. But what really, really drew me to these at first was the, the, the sole. This sole right here up against the navy. I thought I thought that gave it such a beautiful look. Had this sole been black, my I would have glossed right over these. I would have passed these up immediately. Seeing that sole against that navy shade, it I, I was just I was just in love. Uh, I, I I still can't even articulate in words. I just something about the combination of tan tan and navy color. And like I said, these are short wing bluchers, not to be confused with the long wing bluchers. The one thing that's kind of tricky when you're ordering from the UK, obviously, is the sizing. The sizing on these, uh, I lucked out. I, I read, you know, what they recommended size-wise. I'm a nine in the US. And so I ordered an eight in the UK. And turns out, yep, that's very solid advice. And actually on the inside of the shoe here, it says uh, made in England, Bruno 9276A. It says Great Britain eight, US nine. And, uh, you can see there's, there's their logo on the inside there. Sanders made in England since 1873. I got my sole protector there. So on the inside of these, it's got a Goodyear welted stamp. Sanders did end up uh, adopting the Goodyear welted method. It actually helped speed up their their manufacturing process. During, during World War II, their their production went way way up. Their demand went way up, obviously, because they had to uh, supply the military officers and and soldiers with with dress boots and combat boots and all that. And so Sanders, that that's when the the shoe industry in England really profited a lot and so that's when Sanders really really grew but yeah they, they've been in business since 1873 and let me tell you there's uh, if you've never bought a pair of English shoes or a pair of handmade shoes like this before when they come in the box I've talked about the smell it's not just that it's it's the gloss and it's it's the attention to detail and the, the quality of the materials that when you pick these up you feel like you're holding a piece of history like literally you feel like you feel like you're holding a true piece of heritage. It, you're not ever gonna feel that way when you open up a box of Nikes, you know, sneakers or whatever. When I experience opening these for the first time, it becomes readily a, evident to you that there's something special about these. Um, I just watched their their YouTube video, actually, they have a YouTube video showing the entire manufacturing process and it's, it's very cool. It's very cool to watch. Another thing that's tricky about ordering from the UK and it, it is a little daunting ordering from over, overseas. Uh, in the UK, they have something called the VAT tax or the VAT tax. That confused me, but actually, because they have that tax, that works in your favor if you're if you live in America. Y you you get exempted from that tax, so you get these cheaper than people in the UK do. <laughs> Sadly enough, 
People in the UK are gonna actually pay more, maybe 20, 30% more. I'd have to go back and double check what the VAT tax is. But basically, um, when you order these online, it shows you the price in pounds, in British pounds, and you're filling out your address. You, you see the discount, like just like, you know, if you enter in a discount code or a promo code, the same thing happens with this. They take the VAT tax out and, it, and it, I wanna say it dropped the price about 20%. Now these aren't cheap. These, I wanna say I got these for around 400 even. Maybe a little more than that. Another complication I ran into was this isn't their fault. My bank, you know, they wouldn't let the order process. They red flagged it before the order could go through. They thought it was spam or something because I'd, I'd never ordered anything from from Europe before. Go figure. So so I had to call my bank and get tell them, no, no, I'm trying to buy these pair of shoes. And they're like, what? You're buying this? Shoes for how much money? And I also heard a rumor, and maybe maybe you shoe enthusiasts could confirm this for me. I heard a rumor one time, and I have not been able to corroborate this on the internet at all. But uh, I, I heard that uh, that Sanders is actually made either in the same factory or shares room within the same factory as Trickers, which would explain a lot. Now I don't own a pair of Trickers, but I can tell you that, that looking at pictures of Trickers and looking at pictures of these. They look to be about the same quality of craftsmanship and materials. In other words, if somebody told me that these were a pair of Trickers, I would believe them because they, they kind of have that same look. Um, now, Trickers is also a UK-based shoe company that, oh, they just, they, they make some really good looking stuff too. Definitely on, definitely at this level right here. So I would put Sanders on the same, basically Sanders and Trickers kind of on the same on the same level there, I, I would I would say. But then again, I don't own a pair of Trickers to be able to validate that. Uh, again, please, anybody that has experience with both brands or with Trickers, please, please corroborate some of my <laughs> ramblings here. Another thing that was kind of cool about these is they came with, with this handy dandy uh, stuff. <laughs> don't worry, it's not Kiwi. It's called Saphir or Sapphire. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, Saphir Renovateur. It's French or something like that. Might look misleading, but probably can't tell. But this is a blue. That, that's a that's a blue, a blue color. Talk about heritage. This also has the smell of heritage. This whatever this is, this is. I've only used it once on these, and uh, it smells so good. If you're used to smelling kiwi, this is like a hundred notches above kiwi. <laughs> Renovateur. Glassage, I don't know what that means. This, this is really good stuff. I'm glad that they included this. They also included some shoe bags. I talked about wearing uh, wingtips with shorts before. I, I wear these a lot with shorts in the summertime. I, in the summer when it's really hot, I love throwing on a pair of shorts with a polo, with no show socks and, and throwing these on and just and going to dinner somewhere. I love it. I love walking around in these. These are just as comfortable as any of my Aldens, any of my, any of my Grandstones, and any of my Vibergs. These are just as comfortable. There is a little something I read uh, one time about the reason why shoes from England are a more generous fit as compared to shoes made in Italy or in Spain or in Portugal. Those shoes seem to be slimmer it, it, from that region, um, and mainly that's because uh, your standard European foot is wider and so I think I definitely fall into that category because any any pair of Italian shoes I've ever bought were were really narrow and uh, I think anatomically I fall more in line with English made shoes American made shoes are also pretty wide normally I guess the standard Italian foot or Spanish foot is is thinner so that's why you notice this trend from shoes made from different places in the old world still continue on their same lineage. And it's really fascinating to me to kind of follow the history and follow the lineage and, and to see why exactly certain details are that way. I, I just, I love that. I love, I love products with a story behind it and I love reading about it and researching it. I'll talk about their website real fast. I clicked on their heritage tab. Uh, I'll just read real quick. It says, Sanders and Sanders Limited, or Sanders Brothers, as it was first named, was established in 1873 by brothers William and Thomas Sanders of Rushton, Northamptonshire. Uh, William Benjamin Sanders was apprenticed to the shoe and boot trade as a lad 
and then went on to working in London as a clicker before returning to Rushden in 1871 at the end of the Franco-Prussian War with the vision of setting up his own shoemaking business with his brother. Well, a mission success. Um, What's a, what's a clicker? I don't know what a clicker is. Uh, something I'll have to look up on the internet. In 1873, they had five craftsmen in a workshop in the center of Rushton. They were was hard, hours were long, only five men in the company. Wow, they were faced with an ongoing endeavor. It wasn't long before they moved premises further up the street into a larger building. The machinery became more advanced. Charles Goodyear provided the shoemaking industry with Goodyear welting machines. The process sped up remarkably, so, as war struck and the boots were at their highest demand, the factory was producing almost 6,000 pairs of army boots per week. When the war ended in 1918, the demand in shoes hadn't dwindled and it was still around five to 6,000 pairs of shoes were leaving the factory and being delivered to customers all over the country. Their, their original factory burned down. They went on to rebuild the factory and adopted more modern machinery. And you know, the rest is history. I mean, they're still, making an incredible shoe today. And this is my only pair of sanders, but I've had them for over four years now. And, and like I said, I, I wear them a lot in the summertime, you know, casually with shorts and a polo, or I do wear these with a suit too, with my summer weight suits, my linens, um, uh, my, my lightweight cotton suits. I, I throw these on, Ugh, they look incredible. Like I said, I wanted to touch on a brand that I don't feel gets enough representation out there. That they don't, they don't get. Like I, I looked up YouTube reviews on these, and on Instagram, you just don't see a lot of these on Instagram. I do know that uh, James Bond wore these in a recent uh, movie. I think Inspector he wore some suede Chelsea's from Sanders, which hell yeah. I mean, if James Bond owns a pair, then. Every man needs to have a pair, or he's not a man. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, I, I, hope, I hope you learned something new about, you know, English shoemaking and, and why I love it. And I do plan to do a review on my other English-made shoes um, in, in time. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram and, and check out how, these have, how I've worn these over the years and, and how these, they've aged and how they will continue to age. Thank you.